Uh, so yes, uh, this is the UX of UX. It's a pretty meta topic, but it also is, uh, actually this talk is very important to me because uh, a couple of months back I realized that I actually completed five years with open source, primarily with design. Uh, this talk is mostly about how, uh, what was my experience as a person who didn't know how to write code, as a person who didn't know how to, who just knew how to design a couple of few things. I mean, I, when I say I don't know how to write code, I say I didn't even know how to write proper semantic HTML. So I started from there, and it's been five years. And this talk is about the behind the scenes of how I picked up. Who am I? I am Raghu Nair. Uh, I am currently a master's student in interaction design. I am a huge open source fan. Uh, that I, uh, I was working on open source software before GitHub happened. There were things which are on Gitorious, so I've seen the transition happen from Gitorious to GitHub, Gitorious to GitHub, GitHub to GitLab, uh, all, all sort of things. Yes, uh, a, f a couple of things. I, I mean, it's story time. Five years back, when I was starting out in design, there was a couple of things which happened to me which were so awesome, which I, if I think, look back and I think about it, I won't have started with open source design if they didn't happen with me. So this talk is mostly about that part and my learnings from those things and what to avoid and what not to avoid. The first thing, yes, if you're working on an open source community, be welcoming. Now by being welcoming, I don't say, say hi, reply back to emails, you know. Small, small talk, chit chat, no. Being, by, by being welcoming, I mean, do contributors maintain the spirit of the project? It's important. I mean, you gotta you gotta be welcoming for them. You gotta document your computer. Uh, you gotta document your contribution guidelines. Contribution guidelines may include or should actually include getting started. Should actually include the code of conduct. Um, style guide maybe. But you know, even if a project is small, having these small, small, small things, either one of them or all of them, makes the project extremely welcoming for a person who's kind of shy, doesn't like to write mails to people, and is just looking out for the right thing. It worked out for me because this is something which happened. Using Wiki effectively. Wiki, GitHub give, give, gives us an awesome option of adding, adding Wiki, uh, Wiki, pages, Wiki pages, which is kind of underused for a lot of uh, open source projects, kind of overused for a lot of good open source projects, and I kind of love that. So using Wiki effectively made, made, uh, made, it made it super simple for new people coming in. Using tags. Now tags, uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub Issue Tracker has a feature called tagging. Yes, yeah, everyone, uh, everyone uh, probably here knows that. Now uh, by tags, th I see a lot, of, uh, rep a lot of repositories use tags like UX, design, um, starter jobs. For me, my personal favorite was back in the day when I came across this. This, this primarily changed my outlook towards open source design and was the biggest factor how I got hooked into open source design. Junior jobs plus design. Junior jobs can be of developers. Junior jobs can be for designers. Junior jobs can be for content people. Junior jobs can be for everyone. So you gotta subcategorize your junior jobs. Not just use junior jobs. Subcategorize them into smaller, smaller, even smaller categories so that the right person reaches the right place. This is the easiest way to get people on board when you're doing open source design. Onboarding. Onboarding was important. Now by onboarding, I mean software onboarding. So five years back, or like maybe three years back, or maybe even yesterday, when I'm looking at a new open source, cool open source project, and I really, really want to uh, feel like, and I, I want to contribute to this. I mean, this is, this is awesome, and I would like to contribute to it. Something like this happens with me. I got to run some commands. I'm not a badass programmer, so I'm just talking like a designer right now. You got to start the node servers. Yeah, you got to compile your CSS, JavaScript. And yeah, by the time it happens, I'm like, oh no, man, this is some error comes up, and I just give up on it. <laughs> this is the easiest way to get a person who's not a developer off board your <laughs> off board from your uh, project even before he has started. This happened with me with a lot of projects. This ha didn't happen with me a lot of projects as well, so which was a big thumbs up. So 
reducing installation steps. The biggest example, the first thing which came to my mind when I was talking about reduction in installation steps and which everyone should need to learn from is actually the WordPress 500 install. Yeah, I don't need to touch the code base. I mean, it's simple. Even the language, the content, everything is simple. It's translated. It's like you can do this in any language I mean, you can think of. It's, I know it's a big community, but it's a simple install. It's like it's worth the, uh, worth the effort. I think this is something which has not changed in WordPress since like ever. I don't know. Like <laughs> yes, uh, one thing. So two years, uh, two years back when I was working with open source software, something which happened to me. And I came across this term called design objectivity. This is something which I use <coughs> almost uh, on a daily basis. Now, this is like a kind of a debated topic. Design objectivity, in other terms, is also called as pixel fucking. <laughs> <laughs> now, yesterday, I mean, when I was preparing my slides, I was looking out for you know good definitions of what pixel fucking means. <laughs> it took me a while, but I kind of found this, which was always there. So it's like someone who fucked pixel fucks pays more attention to things like grain than the overall effectiveness of the shot. It was not quoted by Albert Einstein. It is from the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> So yes, uh, basically uh, what happens in open source com uh, community and, and design being subjective, everyone wants to be the designer. There are discussions, there are discussions which are very long. And what happens in, in these discussions, the best design solutions are kind of lost in the middle because everyone wants to put on their thoughts. And every thought is kind of different from the other, good or bad. It can be good, it can be bad, but it gets different. So dealing with uh, design objectivity is actually uh, a very important a uh, very, very important issue right now. I had this discussion with a colleague of mine as well a couple of days back. We, uh, we discussed like uh, the way we did it. I mean, the way uh, the community I currently contribute to, Nextlab does it, is pretty awesome. So in case I'm absent and two people who have been contributing ar around say, yes, this works, we lock it down. We do not take further ideas. We take ideas, we won't take ideas for V1. We take ideas for V2. So that's the easiest way to get a V1 out. And that's the point. I mean, uh, getting a result is more important than having a discussion, uh, having a super, super long discussion. The other way to fix it is defining a design language. Now, design language can be a visual style guide. Notice I'm blurred out CSS here because CSS guidelines are like classes and all. No, I'm talking about design here. Uh, or it can be a wiki of design thoughts. It doesn't have to be, you know, your button should have this much border radius. No, if I have a certain sense of UX and what I'm looking out for, what my language sense is in the project, if you're enough to say that, it's, it's kind of, it, it, you're almost there. You're, get, you're getting there with the defining a design language. It's okay, it's fine. This is something uh, which can also help out in reducing pixel fuckingness or design objectivity in your projects. The other thing which comes to me is like feature requests. So I maintain, uh, I maintain, I co-maintain a repository which is a calendar application on top of, own uh, on top of Nextcloud. And we get, a, we get a fuckload of feature requests. Like every day, like probably five or something, you know? But there's a time when I'm busy, I'm like a student, like my other co manager is also a student. So how do we deal with so many of them? It's, it's, a, simple, it's a simple logic. We implement relevant requests, and not, requ not all of them, unless all of them are relevant. <laughs> <laughs> it's very mad, I told you. <laughs> so put feature requests out of poll. Polling is, not, uh, polling is not a difficult thing to do. I mean, you don't, you don't need a forum for it. Now, GitHub allows you to put a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the feature itself, in the issue itself. So if you have like, people who actually request a feature, you can, uh, and it's like a really talked about, it actually becomes your V1. It's not my personal taste driving the, my design or my personal taste driving my features. It's the community which is driving my features. It's like if, uh, if the community really wants it, there'll be a lot of people actually going up, going for it, you know? If there's a bug which is like annoying a lot of users, a lot of users will be, you know, putting their thumbs up on it. So this is like a great, great, uh, great way to figure out how or which features or which bug fixes to, fi to fix. Design thinking. Design thinking is actually one of the most neglected topics. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, but that's how it is. It's like we are. We are engineers, and it's very, very engineering driven. Now, even I have turned out to be more of an engineer than a designer, sadly. <laughs> uh, yes, it's engineering driven. It's still, it still lacks. We are here already. We were here earlier, but we got to reach here. That's, that's, that's the difference we got to make. And for doing that, we got to, we got to involve design since the start. 
Now, involving design since a start can be done in a couple of ways. I know for a lot of people actually write articles uh, on, uh, I mean, not like articles, like essays on GitHub. I say, I need a feature. Let's, like, I mean, I need this feature. I need this enhancement. It can be done in this way. I see a lot of people writing paragraphs about it. No. Just draw a simple wireframe and put it out there. It's easily debatable. A lot of wireframes, and, and, and it's, it's scientifically proven that images register to your head more than text does. So that's another way of looking at it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, how we do it. We put out wireframes, we iterate over wireframes, and we get the solution out. So involving design since the start, we'll have the perfect solution, or perfect V1 at least, all the time. So that's how it should be. If you over-engineer it, it's the easiest way to mess up usability, and which, which we see you know, in, a, in a lot of softwares, not even just, uh, not even just um, open source, even a lot of proprietary softwares, uh, we see over-engineering, when engineering is driving design, not the other way around. We see a lot of over-engineered products. We, we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of, uh, uh, we see a lot of features being implemented at the wrong place at the right at the, at the wrong time, uh, which could have halted, and more important features should have got in or design design which could have been better, which could have been more usable if design was there since the start. If the design had not come in, then it was the visual stage or like halfway through the process. No, design has to be in the start, and I can like cry about it all the time. Get the design in since the start. So this is basically what I realized. So. As a small recap of what we talked about, yes, being welcoming. Being welcoming doesn't mean writing uh, emails. Being welcoming means contributor guidelines, style guides, keep everything there. There's, there's a need of a lot of focus on onboarding because a lot of people leave because they could not get the software installed. Yeah, don't fuck the pixels too much, man. It's, it's annoying to review so many features then. Uh, Pull off feature requests. They're, I mean, then you realize what's important, what's not important, and what can be. What can be done first? What can be done later on? What's not a priority? And involving design since the start, which is probably the most important thing. And I think this is one of the majority of the things we uh, like to focus in open source design as well, because we are a bunch of cool designers. So yes, I am Raku, and I have time for Q and A. Any questions? I have a comment. Yeah? Uh, thank you for your talk. It's a great talk. Uh, and I, uh, I really could relate to what you mentioned, developing uh, language to discuss mm -hmm. uh, design. I think it's super important. Today we will have uh, a panel discussing how to give design feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean, see, for me, even having a panel is not like a priority. I have a, uh, I, and luckily, in all the communities I've been to, it has a very flexible p panel. Like, s say, for the month of October, I have three people who, who are, like, contributing a lot to the project. They're automatically a part of my panel. So in case I'm... Uh, I didn't mean, I didn't mean that panel. <laughs> I meant for the event. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, it's like, pa panel is, like, super flexible, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. And these are the questions you should ask when you talk about design. Uh, it was something like that, I'm assuming. So uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you repeat the question? Uh, so for example, uh, you said you have to de uh, develop a language to speak uh, about uh, design. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important to ask the right question and not let people just discuss pixels and the color of the button. Mm -hmm. So do you usually <coughs> maybe have a wiki page or you have a page uh, where it expi explains how to talk about design? Do you have we have a we have a pretty strong getting uh, getting started. Uh, um, at at this moment, I uh, I maintain a smaller part of uh, Nextcloud repositories. Uh, we follow the Nextcloud guidelines, and we do have a style guide at Nextcloud. <laughs> Jan will talk about it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, even if it, I mean, it's not it's not having like a visual style guide. I mean, even if it's you not guide. it's not a visual guide. I mean, even if you know that the kind of content you would like to write on, even that's that's enough. I mean, like, um, 
sign in versus log in, you know? I don't want sign in to be everywhere. I would like log in to be everywhere. I mean, that kind of thing. If you know your design language, yeah. that's, I mean, that's important. Consistency is important. Con I mean, content is also something which is kind of overlooked because, okay, this looks, look, this looks fine on this button, so let's put this on. Yeah. It might just go inconsistent somewhere else. So those things are smaller, smaller things which can be taken, I mean, which can be taken, uh, taken care of. And yeah, that's, that's. Directly to this point, uh, I, I think um, what you mentioned before was, was, was touching this point where you said uh, it's like it's more about being pragmatic than, mm -hmm. than, than over discussing it. So I think that's also like how design is maybe best done. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's important uh, to, you know, to step back and say, dude, I'm doing this and it's going out for V1. Whatever discussions happen now on, it'll go out for V2. I mean, otherwise, design doesn't move ahead. Sometimes it's more important to rule the V1 out uh, than to discuss way too much about V1. And the easiest way to do that is, you know, getting people to agree on one and then moving on from that rather than over discussing it. I mean, moving on is like the most difficult part about design process, you know. You know, if you know your you, V1 won't be like the most pixel perfect one, but at least there's some, some improvement than what it was at V0. And that's more important. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem I see usually in this community is projects are, as you said, so like basically being started by technology people, mm -hmm. and then like design may be even involved from the start. Mm -hmm. But the choice of problems to work on is basically still based on technology. So mm -hmm. um, what I've been thinking about a lot is like how can we sort of basically turn that around and like actually think about problems, like because that's essentially what we, what people care about, right? Users don't care about like the coolest library to do whatever. Yeah. They care about like sending a secure message to your friends. Or exactly. Like, I don't know, sending a file or whatever. Um, so like, how could we um, basically um, not, not only involve you like in the actual development, but in the starting of new projects? So like the choice of actual yeah. The the way I see it is every enhancement, every enhancement which ch uh, changes. Uh, the experience in an ideal case scenario should come with at least a pen drawn wireframe. I mean, no ma I mean, you need you don't need to be an artist to draw boxes, and that's pretty much it for. That's pretty much one, uh, what you need for V1. I mean, you, uh, it's more easier to pen down your thoughts. You just just draw it. I mean, you don't have to be an artist for it. Like whatever changes your experience, think above the libraries. Think about the user experience here. You think that okay, this button's gotta go this side. It'll be a better experience than to go on the other side. You know, you gotta document that th that part. That's what I actually try to say here. Drawing is important. You don't have to do balsamic. <laughs> well, sure, I, I don't see how that's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, I'm I'm just talking about the the choice of actual like projects. Mm -hmm. Like when you start a project mm -hmm. in general, like when mm -hmm. you start developing something. Sure. Um, how do you make that new experience? How do we build but projects that are a good experience by default, essentially? Because, like, you know what I mean? So no project will be, I mean, this might be a very opinionated thing, but no project will be default extremely UX friendly. Okay. By default. I mean, unless you put a, a thought in the start itself. I mean, your V1, your always, your iterated design will be better, more UX friendly than the previous one. Do you, know what I'm, do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, sure, maybe I'm doing a bad job phrasing this. <laughs> My point is like, I don't know, you have certain projects that like are clearly driven by user needs, yeah. or certain projects that are clearly driven by developer needs. Mm -hmm. I see very few user driven projects. Like, mm -hmm. um, just maybe the elementary guys. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, like, I have very few community projects that I can point to mm -hmm. that are really like driven by um, something that should work for average people. Okay. Um, and something that essentially like has design at its very core, like in the ac actual inception of the project. <laughs> um, that's true. I mean, and, and that's the design thinking that. that you that's true. I mean, I, I, I can I can talk a lot about this uh, sp uh, with WordPress, with Ghost, especially Ghost at actually, uh, which is a blogging platform, and it's super design thinking. 
thingy since the start because a couple of people who formed the project were actually designers. That's very, I mean, that's one really good example if you are looking for design thinking since the very, very start. Okay, in a way, I, I do it. Yeah, I mean, having uh, one, I mean, it's like a very uh, commercial statement to say, but having one designer on board in the very start is like the way to be, at least one. Yeah. <laughs>